Hi viewers, welcome to Sahara TV. Today we're speaking with an exceptional Nigerian. We're speaking with a young scientist that has achieved so much when compared with people of her age. Uh, I will be speaking with Ebele Mogo, who got her bachelor's in science and minor in psychology from the University of Waterloo in Canada. And she got her master's in global health and pub public policy in Scotland. She's right now a PhD candidate, and she's the founder and president of Engage Africa Foundation. Ebele, welcome to Sahara TV. Adiola, thank you for having me here. I'm very honored to be speaking with you. Oh, great. Uh, we're glad to have you. But before we go on, just in case mm. anyone out there is not familiar with your story and how exceptional you are, can you oh. please tell everybody how old you were when you finished secondary school? Okay, so I was 14 when I finished secondary school. Um, I, just, I just want to make sure you guys heard what she said. She was 14 when she finished secondary school. <laughs> and how old were you when you finished university? I was 18. Wow. And that's in Canada. And right yes. now, you are a PhD candidate. And mm. um, how old are you now? I'm 23. Wow. Now, at the age of 23, now she's a PhD candidate. And you were just telling me that you will be done in a year or two, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping. I'm trying to go for a year, but we'll see. It's usually a year to two left, because I'm in my second year. So we'll see what so happens. So if you finish, if you have your PhD by the age of 24, 25, if I can just, you know, <laughs> start from there. What's your plan? I will continue what I'm already doing. I'm, I'm, um, I will, I'm hoping to continue building my nonprofit. I'm hoping to, I'm very entrepreneurial, so I hope to do some work that has to do with systems change around the world. And I also like to write, so I will just keep doing what I'm doing on a, hopefully on a bigger scale. So. And speaking yeah. about what you've been doing, mm -hmm. uh, I like to talk a little bit. First of all, you've been focusing on uh, preventing uh, non-communicable diseases in Africa. Tell us a little bit yes. about that. Okay, so where do I start? Okay, so when I was doing my master's, I did my master's in global health and public policy. And I just, I noticed that even though growing up in Nigeria, I noticed that there was this high incidence of things like, you know, hypertension, stroke, diabetes, and they're quite preventable if people know how to manage them. And people were really talking about that. Like when we talked about Africa, people always talked about infectious diseases like malaria, HIV, TB, but then these non-communicable diseases were becoming a big issue. So um, at first I was like a, a bit frustrated by the fact that nobody was doing anything about it. And then I decided to start um, Engage Africa Foundation. So I started with a couple of my colleagues, um, Tomiwa, Nadesh, Ruth, and Cyril. And, and, and our focus is on preventing non-communicable diseases. So there's a, there's a big focus on preventing them instead of simply, um, simply caring. I see. If yes. one person is watching this show today mm -hmm. and, you know, if they can just get maybe one or two things out of this interview, yes. if you can just give us maybe one, two or three points on mm -hmm. some things that we're not doing right that we can actually do to prevent uh, non-communicable diseases in okay. Africa. I think one thing is really like a habit. I think we um, it would be very helpful if we started living healthy lifestyles. So the, the, the four main things we talk about when we talk about healthy lifestyles are like your diet, you know, al alcohol use, tobacco, um, exercise. So people can start, you know, exercising. So take walks and try to eat healthy. Like Af African foods are good because we have lots of vegetables, but sometimes you don't have to use so much starch. So for example, if you're having like pounded yam, you don't have to have as much. Some of, of us eat pounded yam every day. Are you saying that's not completely good for our health? I mean, you, you can eat it every day. Just eat, just take a little portion and have more soup. So try to make it balanced, you know. And um, yeah, I think, and then also with alcohol, don't, I, I, I don't think Nigerians are too bad with this, but alcohol use, just try to not abuse it. And then smoking is not good for you. So try. Um, Did you just say smoking is not good for you? Yes. So you've done some work in Lagos mm. and mm. other parts of Africa. Tell us what's that mm. like. Okay. So um, I did, where do I start? Okay. I did, um, I initiated this malaria prevention project during my master's with, it was called the Edinburgh University Anti-Malaria Outreach Program. And so we basically um, trained some volunteers to do some prevention of malaria. So distributing um, insecticide treated nets in like village communities in Cameroon, but also educating people about how to prevent malaria, you know, like use your nets and things like that. And trying to, um, so it was a community based project. And then in Lagos, um, it's, it's been a while actually. So it, um, that was when I was doing my undergrad. Um, 
then I was 16, so I don't know if everybody knows like my age now. But <laughs> um, so I initiated this um, with the Lagos State Waste Management Agency. They said they they created this um, medical waste unit, and the idea was that to get um, um, medical practitioners all, of, all over the states to properly dispose of their waste, so that you know, because if waste if if you just use them, um, if you don't dispose waste well, then obviously people can get infectious diseases and things yeah. like that. So we're get, trying to get them to sign up for the the agency's program so that they could prop, um, properly dispose of their medical waste. I so see. that's that's so I, I have many more. So it depends on <laughs> how many more. And I know that you've yeah. been you've been telling me that cancer mm -hmm. is preventable as well. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about that because to be honest mm -hmm. with you, we are having more cases of cancer now in Nigeria, yeah. for example. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that cancer, okay, there are many factors that cause um, non-communicable diseases, right? But the main things, the, the key risk factors are the same. So we have things like, um, your, so, so I won't say that people that have cancer, there's a cause, but there are some things you can do to reduce your risk of cancer. Let me tell you one thing that we can actually do now is sitting, because sitting is not very good for your health. Sitting? So, Yes, people say that sitting is like the next, like, um, I think people say it's like the next tobacco. So if too much sitting, because because we're changing our lifestyles and we're no longer just all going to the farm and now we're working in offices. Oh, so wow. Sometimes like in Nigeria, you might just um, go to work and then you enter your car and then you go home and you're not doing anything to keep your body fit. And because of that, you put yourself at risk for some of these diseases. Oh, so wow. it's not really that there's a direct link, but it's more like there are some factors that you can control so that you, you reduce your risk for these diseases. I had never thought of that, that sitting yeah. could so, lead to... So try to do some exercise, try to um, obviously balance your sit. So basically try to live an active lifestyle. I see. Take walks and run, go to the gym, dance, things like that. I see. And uh, Ebele actually has a foundation that is addressing all these issues. And, you know, I'm already impressed by all these things that you're doing. But, you know, yes, let's talk a little bit about you. Tell me a little bit about what drives you, your passion. I mean, for mm -hmm. you to be able to go through school and finish that early, there has to be something that keeps you going. Or is it just your parents that were saying that, oh, you have to, you have to do it? No, it wasn't just my parents. <laughs> My friends are wonderful and they're very supportive, but I, I, for me, I think it's, um, for me, it's, I think it's just, I'm very, I would say it's my curiosity. I always wonder, like, what is possible? And so if I, if I see a problem, I would think, like, what can I do to solve it, you know, or, or I always, I always feel like if, if, um, I guess I, I believe that sense that what is possible? What can I do? So, for example, with school, I think it was just me thinking that if I give my best, like if I if I don't know something and I give my best and I try to understand it, and then I should be the I should be the best or I should I should do exceptionally. So I I believe that if I put in the right amount of effort and commitment, that I can see the results that I want to see. Are you saying that you were not uh, born a genius? You just you worked for. It. Are you saying anybody? can achieve what you've achieved by mm -hmm. your age. You're saying that you don't have to be special in any way. Okay, first of all, I think that um, obviously there are other things like there's your, where you are, your socioeconomic status and things like that. So people are not born with the same circumstances in life. But I think that anybody can be what they want to be. So everybody doesn't have to be doing a doctor of public health. But if, if you're good at something, okay, so I think your question is like, is everybody born smart, right? Yeah, I mean, okay. I'm just thinking of how you went through school that yeah. fast. Okay. I think what I would say is that everybody everybody is intelligent at something. So it's, it's about figuring out what you're, what you're good at and applying yourself to it. So you have to figure out what, what comes, what you enjoy and what you want to learn about. And then you also have that commitment. So you have to apply yourself as well. But, but obviously, there are, also, there are also things that make people like, there are some people that may not, they have funds to, um, to have, they may not have the same um, opportunities. So I think that the most important thing is to make the best of what you have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit what it was like. You actually went to a boarding school when you were still in Nigeria. What was that yeah. like? And I was, <laughs> I was eight years old. I went there. I went there. Um, you were eight when you started <laughs> secondary <laughs> school or? Um, yes, but I, I only stayed in the boarding school for one year because we moved to Lagos. The boarding school was in Aquarium Bomb. Ah. So it was definitely interesting. I mean, that was the first time I was living away from home and it was, um, it was, it was, um, so it was kind of in a rural area. So we had to go to the stream 
and then you to have get water. To, yeah, you had to go to the stream. I, so I used to carry like my bucket on my head and things like that. <laughs> and you were eight. <laughs> I don't know. I, sometimes I think about it and it makes me laugh. But but I never really seen myself as like, oh, I'm eight or I'm 23. I always think I'm like, I've always been seen myself as like more mature than I really am. So now that I think back on it, I'm like, oh, wow, I was really young. But then I thought I was just like in just one and then I was just with my mates. So. And you, sub you survived it a whole year in uh, boarding school. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I think about it and I, I actually find it funny. <laughs> I see. Um, yeah. There are some parents, though, that would say that, no, this child is too young. I want him or her mm -hmm. to be much older. That never happened when you were growing up? Okay. Um, my parents have been so wonderful in that in that sense because I remember when I was I, we moved from Lagos and we moved to another city and I was going to um, take this, the entrance examinations, and so they said I was too young to go to the next class, and so my mom told them to give me the exam for um, I think it was primary three. So my mom told them to give me the exam for primary two and primary three, and if I passed the exam for primary three, I had to go. And so when I passed the two of them, then she was like, "You have to allow her to go because you know she's." You have to let her go. She's, she just she proved herself. It. Yeah. So my parents always encouraged me. Like it was, nice. it was never. And I and I also had um I also had good teachers. I think because they mm. also made me put me in positions of leadership. So I never saw myself as oh I'm younger than everyone. I saw myself as capable, just as cap um, capable as everyone. So hopefully yeah. some parents listening to this would not uh, prevent their children from going ahead just because of the yes, age. You know, it's good when you get done early. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But there has to be some advantages and disadvantages mm -hmm. to that. What was it like? Uh, what was, I mean, did you ever face some challenges mm -hmm. having to be the youngest in every class and uh, every, you know, like, like you're among your yeah. peers? What was that like? And what were some of the cha challenges? In Nigeria, I, I, it wasn't much of a challenge because, I mean, people were older than me, but I was also, I was also kind of mature, so it never occurred to me that, I didn't feel like younger. I could talk to anyone, or you know what I mean. Um, mm -hmm. But when I came to Canada, because in Canada people start university later as well, so they start like eighteen, 18. and nineteen. So the gap became really huge. And obviously, mm -hmm. you guys are in different phases of life. But then again, like it took obviously it takes some while to adjust to the culture and adjust to the age difference. But I don't, I don't think it was. Much, it, it's made me who I am. So I don't think it, it was a yeah. bad thing. One I, thing I. I Sorry. I think I understand what you're saying because in Nigeria it's not uncommon. So, yeah. but then when you get to a country where the standard age of starting university really is hard, 18, yeah. then it, became, it becomes mm. more obvious. Yeah. All right. I wanted to. Um, okay, I wanted to say one potential thing. Mm -hmm. I don't want to call it a disadvantage, but something to just keep in mind is also, you know, it's also good to. I think the world that we live in now, it's not just about like what degrees you have. It's about what value can you offer in the exactly. world. Exactly. And so it's not just about. I don't. I don't want parents to still tell their kids, okay, all of you go and get your PhD or whatever. Like I think it's very important that you also get experiences. So all through my ed education, I was trying to also figure out what do I want to do and what is going to take me where I want to get to I in see. life. And I try to accumulate experiences as well. So I think even if you um, go to school young, also try to balance that with experiences because it helps you to know what you actually want to study. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. All right, so um, I'm going to start rounding up a little bit. And we have your website, the website yeah. of your foundation. We have it up so that people can check it out so they know more of the good works that you've been doing and get to meet mm -hmm. your other team members. You actually have people from different parts of Africa that are working uh, with mm -hmm. you in this foundation. Uh, but before I let you go, I just want you to inspire some young people that may be watching you today and people mm -hmm. who may for example a lot of young people don't really think about studying abroad uh, and it's it's a very good option because it helps you to maximize your uh, your capability if I can say that but if you can just say some words of inspiration to some young people that may be watching you today okay um I think the most important thing I want to tell young people is that they should try to be when they, like in the approach to life, they should try to be makers and not consumers. So always try to um, try to figure out how you can create things. You know, like a lot of times we use things that were made by other people. We use cars, we use everything that was made by other people. So even in your education or whatever you're doing, try to figure out how can you contribute something and how can you make things instead of just consuming. And also think about, for example, instead of just thinking about how you can work for someone, you can also think about how can I create jobs for people or how can you solve a problem in coming. So think, always think like that as you go through your education so that 
you can you can figure out ways to add real value to wherever you are you know so that's that's one thing i would love to tell people and uh, they should also probably always think outside the box. Like, you yes. decided to go and study abroad at the age of 14. I can't imagine your mom letting you go <laughs> at the age of 14. That's like, you know, but yeah. you did it. And, yeah. you know, there you are today. And when you're done with your PhD, mm -hmm. you said you want to continue with the research work that you've been doing with all these uh, non-communicable diseases, right? Mm -hmm. so I, hope, I hope to do many things, actually. So I'll keep okay. building this. I want to do some more. I really love to do work and in, in change the systems and improving the way that systems work, you know. So... I'll be doing that, and I hope to um, keep writing. I write, so I also hope to. Yes, you are a writer. That's true, that's and you write so poems as well. Yes. <laughs> All right. So, Abele, my last question. Of course, you okay. know that this was gonna, uh, you know, this was gonna come up. Are you available? Single? Uh, is it the relationship is complicated? Not complicated? How can? <laughs> and what's the criteria for you know an eligible guy to <laughs> contact you? Guys that have passed through you. Um, I um I'm not married. That's what I was. Of saying. course you're not. We know that. <laughs> um, so tell tell them to come to come through you, and then you keep me posted. Okay, I don't do much making, but <laughs> <laughs> but you I'm know you guys you you heard her. She's not married yeah, yet. When... I just said I'm not married. I didn't say whether I'm single or I'm <laughs> Yeah, but when <laughs> when the lady is not married, she's not married yeah, yet. I mean, I'm I'm married. sure you know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ibele, uh, thank you for right. inspiring us today. Right. And we hope you know keep doing what you're doing. We really enjoy speaking with you. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thank you, Adiola. All right, guys, that has been Ibele Mojo. And I'm sure that you've been inspired by her story. Make sure you visit her, her website to know more about the good works that she's doing. And I hope that she has inspired you today. All right, stay tuned. We have much more to come. Bye.